In my first probiotic video, I talked about um, the four subspecies to look for in avoiding antibiotic associated diarrhea, and then uh, the four subspecies of bacteria to look for if you suffer from inflammatory bowel disease or ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. So now I wanted to talk more. There's more information now about um, what the microbiota does to the body. The microbiota is essentially the um, biofilm that lines the colon and a little bit of the small intestine, and then the bacteria that inhabit that biofilm. There's about a hundred trillion different bacteria that live in your gut. And that's more DNA, more foreign DNA than you actually have uh, of natural cells. So there's a great relationship between the bacteria that you find in your gut, the proper functioning in the gut, and then also the way the emotions uh, can maintain themselves, the way cardiology and heart disease stays at in check, and also the way um, the immune system works. So there's great links that I'll put on uh, studies that have been associated between what I just mentioned and microbiota, or your bacteria. And there's more information coming out there. So my suggestion is always that you take a probiotic to avoid the two things, the antibiotic associated diarrhea and uh, getting good gut flora if you have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. But I think now with the information, even to the point of not just the three other things I mentioned, but to the point of weight loss, you'll find that when uh, stool is transferred from a, an obese mouse to a skinny mouse, the skinny mouse becomes obese. Just the opposite is there too. If you have stool transferred from a skinny mouse to an obese mouse, the obese mouse then becomes skinny. So you'll have the different patterns of health and say the set point in somebody's weight manifest when you have the proper amount of gut flora. Now you can actually get gut flora by taking bacteria uh, in the form of a probiotic. Now as far as which probiotic, it's hard to, uh, I have my favorites, but now it's the information's coming out that you don't even need the subspecies, it's just the bacteria species that you have to look for. So in a nutshell, if you search the shelves, you go to the refrigerated section, and you get at least something with bifidobacter, lactobacilli, and saccharomyces, I, I think you're good enough. There is one, as I mentioned in the last video, something called VSL double strength number three, that is the only probiotic that is covered by some insurances. If you can get that one packet or half packet a day, perfect. The problem with uh, initiating probiotic coverage is that when you start it, you might get bloated because you'll have a massive amount of bacteria trying to inhabit your, your large intestine and a little bit of your small intestine. Well, you'll continue to try to inhabit until your body and your gut gets used to a certain plethora of fiber. That's why I wanted to mention this. Taking a probiotic is not necessarily just taking this and hoping that your probiotic or the bacteria that, you're, that are in these things inhabit your colon so you can stop this. But these things won't inhabit the colon unless you have a bunch of different fibers. It's not just taking Metamucil or Fibercon or my favorite, psyllium. It actually means you have to take a combination of insoluble and soluble fibers. All these things help. All these things help to pull cholesterol out. They help to keep your insulin levels low. They help to lower uh, inflammatory markers. I have all these in my fiber videos. But they also are, if you look at this, there's no meat products in here and this is a mostly vegetarian, plant-based, whole food diet. Now, uh, some of these things, even the beans, you'll be able to get protein out of this, so I, I wouldn't worry if you're into uh, getting, gain, trying to gain weight or trying to gain muscle mass. You'll still be able to do it with this. You'll actually be able to get cleaner muscle mass. But bottom line is that you have to have fiber in order to support the probiotic. These are considered prebiotics. If you can't fill this stuff in, or you don't have access to all this plethora, like in the midwinter when everything is kind of cold and nuts only or berries only or fish only, then you might have to supplement with a soluble fiber. I like PGX. I usually use this for satiety when I'm trying to cut weight or train for a big hike. Uh, the fiber, if you take this with a good amount of water, will fill up the stomach, small intestine, and give you a sense of satiety. It also works to pull out cholesterol, and it also works uh, to provide good environment for the probiotic bacteria to stay. So you can actually get 
two forms of fiber. That's the insoluble fiber that actually works to speed up transit through the digestive system, cleans it out, and then the soluble fiber that adds a mucus layer. Um, it's probably too encompassing to talk about all that stuff now. I just want to have the basics of probiotics down. So again, the bottom line is that if you take a probiotic, try to have the three basic um, species that I mentioned. Don't worry about the subspecies anymore. Try to get it in a refrigerated section of a, um, a good uh, herbal shop or vitamin shop. I like fruitful yield. I like whole foods. And then you try to have an expiration date or best used by date. If you have no expiration date, I would be careful. If you get it off the shelf dry, it'll probably last. This one has an expiration date, but doesn't have... Well, well, this is good enough for now, but until I get my refill. This is an old one I gave to my son. Uh, but if, if you can stick to those rules, you should be good when you pick a probiotic out altogether. If you try to eat um, a lot of a variety of fiber, you'll also be good. They'll have at least a good basis for these guys to stick. Now again, there's something called the clean hypothesis where you don't have to wash everything spick and span. Uh, this is alcohol. We have to keep up with OSHA as far as washing hands, soap and water, and alcohol. But you sometimes with the clean hypothesis, you play with dirt, you play in the garden, you uh, have a pet around. You don't necessarily rub off everything for lack of uh, having any good bacteria in you. So it sometimes helps with the immune system as well. I wouldn't look for parasites to be inhabiting your gut. I uh, would be careful about uh, some of the non-organic foods having some pesticides on them, so you still have to wash chemicals off, but sometimes having a little bit of dirt around it helps you build up a good uh, uh, flora or microbiota. So bottom line is you, can, you know how to pick the bacteria of the probiotics. You'll have to read the labels. As far as the CFUs or how many billion bacteria, that VSL-3 double strength has about 300 billion. Some of these carry about 2 to 3 billion. The more the better because usually some of these will get destroyed or killed. I don't agree with taking yogurt or the Dan Actives, Activas. I think they're tasty but usually they're cultured and they will usually kill or when they're pasteurized kill the majority of bacteria that you're trying to get from them. And plus, they're also like 50 cents a shot, so I think it's better to get a 5 buck or a 10 buck probiotic that'll last you 30 days than uh, do it the other way. So, and plus, I don't like dairy, so um, I think it's too uh, irritating a, a protein for a lot of my patients. So, th think about that. Don't go toward the usual conventional yo yogurts. I mean, if you want yogurt for protein and taste, fine. Um, also, have a wide variety of prebiotics in the form of soluble fibers, maybe insoluble fibers. If you can't do any of this stuff, fine. Go to Metamucil, go to Fibercon, go to Psyllium Husk. Two teaspoons of Psyllium Husk uh, with, uh, once or twice a day will also fill up a little bit. Um, fiber is supposed to be about 35 grams of a wide variety a day uh, for a man and 25 for a woman, but uh, as in my fiber videos, you'll probably get really bloated for the first two weeks, so just uh, be careful. You can use My Fitness Pal to figure out your total fiber per day and then um, add to it over the course of two weeks, uh, just as long as you uh, have some place to get rid of the gas. But after two weeks, the gut's good. And then you can add the fiber, uh, and then you can add the probiotic as well. Um, usually I'll say, if you use an antibiotic, get on a probiotic for about 30 days, but with the information out there, if you have a disease process, you're trying to lose weight, you have uh, anything that's starting to develop with you, uh, as far as immunity, heart disease, that's uh, out of control and you're taking a lot of medicines for, perhaps if it's affordable, uh, a probiotic would be a wise choice on a daily basis until your disease process is under control. Then you can start weaning off some of your supplements, but it really depends on the priority. That's why you come and see me. Prioritize where you put your money as far as supplements. There might be other things to do before. It depends on your medical disease.